Hey, what's happening guys? Today, we're going to be talking all about op amps, but I want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Solder Stick. Uh, there'll be a little ad at the end. There'll be a link to this down below. You should definitely check them out. So today, we're going to be talking about op amps and transconductance. So here is the basic symbol for an op amp. You know, we have our output over here. We have our non-inverting input and our inverting, and it doesn't matter which one is on top, which one's on the bottom. Whether you're pitching or catching, you're still playing ball. So there are a lot of different specifications of the different op amps. Um, one of them is the input offset voltage, for instance, and that says that even with no input voltage, there is going to be a small output voltage. It just happens. The offset voltage is which when you apply it to one input, it causes the output to be at zero volts. Then we also have common mode rejection ratio. This says if you put the same signal, not an inverted signal, the same signal on both inputs, it is going to reject them. <clears throat> then we have bandwidth. That is the range of frequencies that the op amp can operate at. And we also have the unity gain frequency as part of bandwidth, and that is the frequency at which the gain falls to one unity. What else? Slew rate. We also have slew rate, which is the rate of change in the output of an op amp in volts per microsecond. Okay? But what we're gonna talk about today is transconductance. There's also its friend transimpedance, but today we're just going to stick to transconductance, okay? So when we talked about all of those other off-amp characteristics, input offset, common mode rejection, bandwidth, slew rate, the next one we have is uh, transconductance. Transconductance is uh, the characteristic of the current on the output as related to the voltage across the input. Conductance, of course, is the reciprocal of resistance. And there is also an AC version called transadmittance, but we're not getting into that. So transconductance is generally referred to as G, conductance, with a subscript of an M on it for mutual. Transconductance is also known as mutual conductance. And its formula, G sub M, is equal to the change, delta, of the current at the output over the change of voltage at the input. And the unit for that is Siemens. I probably dyslexied those uh, I's and E's around. I do that sometimes. <laughs> There's also trans resistance, which is mutual resistance. Remember I told you uh, resist conductance is the opposite of resistance, obviously, but we don't really have to talk about any of that today. So what I'm going to show you here is a very simple example of a transconductance amplifier. That is the amplifier using an op amp. In this case, we'll call it like a 741. I forgot to put my pin numbers here. Trying to keep it all color coordinated for y'all. I'm just throwing pens around. Seven and four. Okay, so now we have all our pin numbers. So what we can do, let's just take our output here. And we'll just stretch it out. Now pin two is going to be our input. And you know, for a 741, you can go somewhere in the range of, what, 3 to 15 volts? Okay. Now, P2 
pin three, I'm sorry, pin two, our inverting input output is going to go to ground, but we can't do it yet. We have to put it through a voltage divider. And that voltage divider is our load that we're going to put on this circuit. And it's going to go to ground, like so. And then all we have to do is bring our inverting input to there. So what's going to happen is when we put a voltage here, we're going to get a current out there. So we know our op-amp formulas, right? So our V out in this case is going to be equal to V in times R1 plus R2. This is R1 and R2. Okay. Divided by R2. Our I out is going to be equal to V out divided by R1 plus R2. You see how that is quite similar? Sim similar? Yeah. And if we simplify it even further, I out is equal to V in divided by R2. Remember, we did our little bit. We did some algebra here. And we get that. So, now you know. But what can you do with it? What's it useful for? Well, it's useful for a lot of stuff, but let's whip up a little simple circuit here again. We will use the LM741 just because it's so simple, but you could substitute any op amp in here. Plus, minus, power, out. Okay. So, Let's say we put 9 volt DC is a good place to be there, minus 9 volt DC here. Then we're going to come out from here and go into a feedback resistor. Actually, not a feedback resistor. It's part of that. Voltage divider. I'm used to just calling it a feedback resistor. Let's keep it simple. We'll go with 1K. Okay? And then we can put something variable in here, like for instance, an LED. And then, of course, our LED will go to ground. Mm, 4.7K. And now, of course, we take our inverting input, like I showed you in the other drawing, and we put it there. But we're not done yet. We are going to take and put a potentiometer here on our input so we can vary the current. And it's going to come over here like a so. In here, the wiper is going to go to our non-inverting input. And the other side, of course, this is basically, a, this is a volume control for electricity. So we're just going to bleed off some of it to ground. And now, uh, let's call this 10K. I'll keep simple values. So now we can control the brightness of this LED by changing the voltage at the input, and it will adjust the current on the output. That is again a transconductance amplifier. All right, so I thought I would try something a little bit different today. So I hope you guys liked this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, don't forget to subscribe. 
big thanks to all the patrons and a big thanks to solder stick for sponsoring this video check out a little 30 second or so video at the end here if you're interested in any of their products they make a lot of great stuff for making your life as an electrical tinkerer or hobbyist or mechanic a little bit easier all right guys that's it i'm out peace